Hi guys, very good afternoon to you. Um, it's a beautiful day out here in India and it's Saturday. I have just uh, uploaded a video number 153 and uh, trust me, it's actually a very good video on the VLOOKUP. Uh, it's a very uh, advanced level of VLOOKUP where we actually combine a lot of formulas together uh, with the VLOOKUP. So do and watch that video. And uh, so in this video, video number 154, uh, I'm going to actually uh, help uh, my brother uh, who has uh, written me an email uh, last week I guess let me just uh, show you what he has written so this is the video number uh, 43 uh, where I have actually um, told you how you can prepare a VBA code uh, you know which can actually uh, collect all the sheet names from your workbook and can print all the names uh, of your sheet right one by one in each uh, every cell right so uh, Mike uh, is writing me uh, Ajay awesome I'm using this in the combo box with indirect to return info for my sheet yes Mike the, I, I know uh, what you're trying to say here because um, indirect can also be used uh, is there added code that would allow you to omit certain sheets by name from the list all right uh, so thank you so much uh, Mike for first of all uh, for writing this email and uh, if I actually understood your question correct then uh, guys let me first take you to this uh, window so here I've created actually this drop down right so you can see here uh, we have got all the client names client A client B and client C right this is a drop down this is a drop down which has a link with this uh, range and uh, so in my that video number 43 what I've done is I have actually tried to you know uh, bring uh, this um, uh, I've tried to tell you that how you can prepare a code which can actually get all these sheet names one by one because if you look at this workbook book, book one uh, we have a sheet uh, called client a client b client c and client d so that code is actually uh, you know uh, printing all these sheet names one by one below each right so if i have some more sheets here if i add some more sheets one two three four five six and if i click on the macro that macro will give me all the sheets so somewhere here uh, we are using this drop down and uh, this is in the data validation uh, if you don't know about this please go to my website or youtube channel under the playlist you'll find the uh, you know a lot of videos on the same uh, uh, under the indirect section and the data validation you can go there and uh, my website name is excelvbalover.com i will be sharing the link with you at the end of this video so here uh, what i've done is i actually use this data validation and this is what we are actually using here so the names the macro is printing the names uh, starting from the a1 and is printing uh, all the sheet names and then that is directly used by this data validation in this even cell right but mike uh, is actually using a combo box so i'll come to that a little later but i mean the concept remains same so mike if i understood you correct then i think you are saying that what if you want don't want to have this client c you want to skip that now obviously you can't delete that from your workbook because it may have some very important data right but at the same time when you uh, select your drop down it should actually not include that client because it is not required right if this is the what you are looking forward to then let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's you know uh, build a code which can um, give us this kind of output and if it is not the case then first it is going to be a learning for you and then write me back right if if you if you're looking for something else right all right guys so let's start this and this is going to be very exciting so first of all i'm going to quickly build the code which you can see in the video number my this uh, 143 i guess what was the video number i just forgot uh, there are 154 videos actually yeah video number 42 you can uh, watch in case if you're looking for the code which can actually bring all these codes i'm not going to uh, explain that code much here uh, rather than i will be focused on the if condition so let's just go to the vba environment and here we'll create the code so let me just name this skipping sheet right so i'll first uh, write the code quickly so I'm going to write here dem uh, ws as my worksheet right and uh, then uh, I'm going to write here uh, uh, for each worksheet in worksheet next well I haven't actually been on VB and Excel uh, last week uh, as I was in uh, uh, Malaysia to <laughs> celebrate New Year. So <laughs> you know, uh, writing the code is looks uh, little uh, weird to me uh, because um, if if you just you know get a break from this excellent VBA uh, when you get back to your this uh, same environment, you know it looks very <laughs> weird. So I'm able to actually I'm trying to think right. 
All right, so uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to declare here a sheet, which is my let's say um, a sheet sh as a worksheet, and uh, I'll set this sheet as this workbook. This is going to be part of this workbook and sheets, and the name of the sheet is I think it's um, client A, right? Uh, watch my I'm again repeating uh, if you uh, I'm not going to explain this code to you because this we have already done that video go and watch that maybe after that you can watch this video uh, so this will actually uh, print all the values here so I'm going to say that um, sales and uh, the row number the column will be one so the value should be equals to the name of the sheet right and uh, then I'll definitely increment the row number also by one so that we can have all these values one by one in the different rows and um, we got to declare here the row number variable as well right I guess we can declare it long or maybe you can declare it by it because after all I'm not using more than 255 values so I think this code is perfect looks perfect to me and maybe um, we can run it right all right, so we got the error. Okay, so oh yeah, so the row number is zero, right? How can a row number be zero in Excel, right? It's very silly actually. So just remove that. Now let's just run the code again. F5. All right, so there you go. So I've got all the sheets here, and uh, if I write here anything else, let's say client, let's say F, and uh, I come back here and I'll run this code again let's see oh I'm sorry I should be within this code all right let me just run this there you go so this is what I have explained actually in that video so now what we want is uh, if there is any sheet name which has a client T name right it should not be it should not be printed that's what I'm trying to do so that it should not be part of this drop down because in this drop down all these clients will be reflected you know which falls I think within this range in the drop down right so uh, we can do one thing here uh, in this for each loop where we are checking the name actually uh, before printing the name we can say that if my sheet name equals to uh, let's say client let's say B I want to print if it is a name then what we are supposed to do then we are actually supposed to uh, go to the next I guess right um oh uh, okay so what we want to do here we don't want to actually print that value right so it should not print the value and uh, so else it should print the value right so we're not writing here anything in the then condition so if so let me just comment this out if name is client b then do nothing right simply that's it so i guess uh, else print the name and the row number and uh, I believe I need to press the end if as well right all right so let's just run this code again and let's see if the result is there or not uh, okay so one important thing I have to be very very cautious uh, oh and this the you know the name which I'm using because in VBA when you work in the uh, if uh, your spellings should be same uh, not the spelling in fact the uppercase lowercase it has to be same right I know uh, this this may surprise you but when you work in the if conditions like in Excel we have find and search two functions which are case sensitive otherwise Excel is a very you know case insensitive program so but in certain cases I think uh, they actually you need to require uh, to pay a little attention so I think now client B is exactly the same way uh, previously it was in the lowercase in the different case so let me just press this all right so I still get the client P. Uh, all right, let me just delete this and run this. Uh, if my sheet name is this, then uh, do nothing. And okay, let's just run this step by step. All right. So here we go. Uh, the first name is client A, so it will go to the else and it will print the name. Perfect. The row number will be incremented. And the next time now we have here client A. Oh, that's the problem, right? okay so it's not moving actually it should move to the next uh, sheet as well and uh, so what is the problem so let me see uh, if I increment this row number one no actually it's moving right it's it says at client B right my bad sorry oh uh, all right but here the comparison is not happening it's still the uh, client A uh, all right so when you go to the next what you find here 
is client A. Okay. So um, oh oh my my ball oh man this is really a blunder. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> it should not be SH actually. It should be WS right because SH is your client A sheet. So it will it will always tell you the client A name right. This is the sheet which is running in a loop actually right now you'll see if I delete this we will actually let me run this on the affit mode right I'm sorry for this uh, but it's a good always you know errors actually give you a lot of learning I must say and when I record the videos I generally don't uh, you know make the programs uh, before I uh, you know uh, go and uh, upload the videos because I believe that uh, uh, you you will not be able to connect with your audience, you know, if you're going to write something which has no issues, right? So it's always good to prepare the code then and there, and then you know, uh, with the uh, errors, you can actually troubleshoot, and uh, so that you can, while watching this, you can also think what I'm doing, you know, and it actually gives you a good amount of learning. So I would say, uh, in fact, this is applicable, I think, to every programming language. But in VBA, I must say, because I'm um, I'm somebody who works on VBA, uh, errors actually gives you a lot of knowledge lot of knowledge really so it's always good to have the errors in your code only then you learn right so now here we have started it so the client name is a obviously uh, this will print here and the next time while it it will go now you see that the client is b right and this is what actually uh, the mistake we were doing or uh, we were actually finding the sh dot name and uh, sh is a client a so that's why it was not able to compare right so client b is equal to client b yes so that's why it has skipped the else part now it will not print anything the row number will further be incremented by three and now when you run this you see you will have a new value here client c and so on client d look at this client f right and so automatically this drop down is linked with that so you will not see your client b sheet here right now if this gap bothers you that uh, what it, what is a way around then maybe you can create a macro further who can cut this entire and you know put it here but maybe I think the best way is uh, when you're actually on this uh, you know when you find the client B then this row number should not be incremented right so what you can do is maybe you can cut this and you can put it here I think that will work so just delete this and now we can run this let me run this and let's see if this is working or not so sure. there we go all right beautiful so we got this and now there will be no blank row right so I guess Mike uh, this is what you are looking forward to and uh, so what I've done is in case you uh, if you are uh, anybody who is watching this video they're not uh, understanding what I've done I've simply actually cut this row number and moved it within the part of this end if so what is happening now let me just re rerun this for you looping is actually very interesting right you can put the code here and there and it can bring a lot of changes trust me so now uh, the first time when it says to the client a it goes to the else because it's not the name client b so it will skip the then part and uh, obviously it will print the value and here the time has come to go to the next row so the moment it uh, sees that here the client b as you can see here so is, if the client b is there then obviously we will skip the end and if it will go to the end if and then after the end if now we are not getting this row number added at all right row number is still two previously we written this row number after end if and that's why before it uh, was going to the next loop it was actually adding row number by one but in this case now it will not add right so this is what exactly you can do and I guess uh, if you're using the combo box as you said uh, um, in your uh, comment uh, so combo box uh, also works on the same concept you just need to give that range uh, for somebody who doesn't know what is the combo box I'm talking about the actually ActiveX control so here you have this combo box and uh, in the combo box also you can actually uh, prepare this kind of a stuff so let me just uh, uh, let's just increase the width of this so that's the combo box right now in this combo box I can do one thing I can go to the form control right click and give the input range so I'm gonna give this range this much right what do you want to link uh, well uh, I can link anything but it's not required but it's fine right so now you see that you have the combo box filled with all those list right so any point in time if I name this if I change this name to anything else then I should start seeing that right so let's just run this code again so here I will press the code and there you have all the sheet names right so now I have got all the sheets right 
and here so we have yeah so here also we have all the sheets right now the another thing which I'm thinking right away and I would like to um, tell you um, as a bonus um, because this is what I'm thinking you know maybe uh, next time your sheet changes you want to avoid client T right so anybody who is using your this macro if he's not a uh, so well with the VBA he doesn't know uh, VBA so well then it's always you know scary to actually tell them to change the code there because he will not be comfortable in doing that so what you can do is instead of that uh, maybe you can write here uh, instead of writing this client B you can simply write here uh, this uh, sheet name in the cells you can choose any cell so let's say I'm going to choose a cell called uh, B2 um, so in the B2 I have this first row and the second column dot value right so now what will happen uh, he doesn't have to go in the VB code he just write here the client sheet so for example if I want to avoid F I copy the name of the sheet and I paste it here this is what you need to tell to your user who is using this macro right and once he, he's done that you can create a macro here and uh, that macro uh, we can create here um, we'll have um, you know almost I think um, uh, discuss this how to create the buttons um, in the, my almost every video so I not spend much of the time on that so this is here we go and we click here and uh, when you're gonna click here uh, first you need to delete this you can also create that in the you know this macro that before running this it should always delete these values first right so now you see here that uh, whatever the client is entered here it is not entered it is not showing up and similarly this will also change your Dropbox now there is no client F and same goes for this as well right um, similarly uh, if, you, if you write here uh, let's say B have to be you know this uppercase lowercase you have to take care of it and now if I delete this and now I press the button again you see that now the B sheet is not there so ultimately in your drop downs B will not come right right so that's it and um, thank you so much once again Mike uh, for writing me in and also for subscribing to my channel uh, last day uh, I saw that and um, all right so I hope uh, this has helped you and this will help you and in case uh, if you need something else then please write me in and for all those who are watching this for the first time remember guys this is my video number 154 and my all videos I try to make as practical as I can so that you can actually apply them in your office as well right so this is my website excelvblower.com uh, in case if you're looking for online training I uh, tra I give also training through Skype application and uh, you can go and check that training content here on the training course and we have all the videos as well here on the Excel we have the videos on the VBA we have the videos according to the category if you're looking for the data validation which I have just shown you in the beginning that drop down you can go and check uh, this category also right all right signing off and I'll come up with some more exciting stuff keep till then keep writing me in and I will definitely come back and try to help you out thank you so much happy learning and once again wish you very very happy new year bye bye